Lego Mindstorms is one of the most loved and influential toy brands in the world. And as a matter of fact, it's much more than just a toy. It invented the home robotics hobby as we know it today by making robotics accessible to both young and old enthusiasts alike. But which generation of Mindstorms will we remember most fondly 20 years from now? Which one will we look back on as the king of Mindstorms? Today, I have 10 reasons for you why I think the EV3 is the golden age of of Lego Mindstorms. What is going on everyone? My name is Kyle and you are watching BuilderDude35, a YouTube channel that's all about Lego Mindstorms. Now this video is going to be a little bit special and that's because this video you're watching right now is a collaboration with UnbrickMe. Now if you aren't familiar with UnbrickMe, he's another YouTuber in the world of Lego Technic and this video was inspired by a comment that he left on one of my earlier videos. This comment actually spawned a really fruitful discussion between him and I and it eventually spawned the question, which is the golden age of Lego Mindstorms? Now, note that we didn't necessarily say best. The term golden age is actually open to interpretation, but the way I see it, the golden age signifies the generation of Mindstorms that's going to be most fondly remembered by the most people at some point in the future. UnbrickMe is of the opinion that the NXT is the golden age of Lego Mindstorms, whereas I think that it's the EV3. It's an interesting difference in opinion, which inspired us to make our own respective 10 reasons why videos explaining our side of the argument. So after you're done checking out this video here, I highly recommend you go check out on BrickMe's 10 reasons why the NXT was the golden age of LEGO Mindstorm. But in the meantime, I have 10 reasons for you why I think EV3 was the golden age of LEGO Mindstorms. Reason number one, the EV3 brings to the table what I think is the most mature feature set. What I mean by that is that when you look at a spec sheet for the EV3 and all of the bells and whistles included, it has what I think is the most well-rounded package for most robotics enthusiasts or classroom settings. For the first time in Mindstorm's history, the EV3 gave us four motor ports in addition to a larger LCD display, backlit buttons, a gyro sensor, and we even got two different types of motors, a large motor and a medium motor. Although, if we're being honest, that gyro sensor is a little bit sus, but I'll, let's save that for another discussion. The EV3 actually had really impressive storage and memory stats for what it was. And if what the EV3 already had built in was not enough storage for you, it even had an SD card slot in the side where you can expand that to the, however large of an SD card you can get, which is pretty darn large. And EV3 is the only Mindstorms generation to date that has an SD card slot like that. This is a great opportunity for me to slide right into my second reason, and that is the EV3 is the only generation of Mindstorms to date to run on a Unix-based operating system. If you don't know what that means, Unix is the operating system type that powers a lot of computers. So for example, Macintosh OS as well as Linux are both Unix-based operating systems. And EV3 running Unix is actually the reason why the EV3 takes so long to boot up. That's your Builder Dude 35 fun fact for today. The other thing that the Unix operating system meant is that the EV3 is the most hackable generation of LEGO Mindstorms. You could use that SD card slot to load other operating systems and hack your EV3 to expand the computing capabilities even further than it was when it came out of the box. One of the most popular options for doing this was EV3 Dev. Running the EV3 on such a hackable operating system system greatly expanded the horizons of what you can do with the EV3 and its computing capabilities, which is why the EV3 is the Mindstorms of choice for a lot of the hackers out there. And uh, just a little note for the FBI agent watching this, I don't mean like the kind of hackers that like steal your identity or, or do John Wick credit card scams. No, these are just friendly neighborhood robotics hackers. Okay, back to the video. Reason number three, a lot of the hardware, so motors and sensors from the NXT could be used on the EV3, and all of the motors from the EV3 could be used on the NXT. It was this cross compatibility that made the EV3 really easy to adopt back in 2013 when it came out, because so many enthusiasts and classrooms already had NXT hardware and didn't want it to go to waste, and it was great that the EV3 allowed you to connect this hardware and use it in your projects. Quite frankly, I'm just 
a little bit bummed that Robot Inventor didn't follow this reverse compatibility scheme. I think it's kind of a missed opportunity. Reason number four is one for all of you FLL fans back home. First LEGO League reached the peak of its participation during the EV3 era of Mindstorms. If you check out these numbers, these are the number of teams registered for a first LEGO League competition over the years. We'll look at 2012. That was the last year where NXT was the newest generation of Mindstorms competing. And we saw that there were roughly 20,000 teams registered for FLL. The next year in 2013, Nature's Fury, which by the way is also the last year that I competed in FLL because I'm an old boomer. We can see that we saw a modest increase to 23,000 teams. And 2013 was the first year where EV3 was available as an option for you to compete with. If we fast forward all the way to 2018, we can see that there were 40,000 FLL teams registered. That is double the amount of teams registered from when the EV3 was first introduced and allowed to compete in FLL. All of these new teams entering FLL for the first time would need to buy a robot to compete with, and most likely they bought an EV3. And by the time 2018 came around, almost all of the teams were using EV3s. So what does this have to do with anything? Remember that my definition of golden age is remembered the most fondly by the most people. And I think that these numbers indicate that tons of people were exposed to the EV3 for the first time through FLL, even more so than during the NXT era due to that explosion in FLL participation that we saw. So that's why I think most people will remember the EV3 20 years from now. Reason number five follows a pretty similar train of thought. That is, the YouTube boom happened during the time of the EV3 generation. So if we think back to 2006, the year the NXT was invented, coincidentally that's also the year that YouTube was invented. But back in 2006, there were probably maybe like one, two, three people maybe watching YouTube at the time. I'm kidding, of course. But the point still stands that in 2013, when the EV3 came out, and then 14, and eventually 2015, when BuilderDude35 came onto the scene, YouTube was much more mature as as a video sharing platform and much more globally recognized as the place to go to for entertainment, tutorials, what have you. Whether people be posting their own Mindstorms projects, tutorials, FLL videos, YouTube was much more powerful of a vehicle for delivering Mindstorms related content during the EV3 era than the NXT ever had during its time. Reason number six, in history class they said something about uh, the golden age of a society has something to do with how much stuff they wrote or uh, of literature, something like that. Anyway, just look at the sheer volume of books that have been written by the EV3 over the years. It's just a Google search away to see the myriad of publications that have been written about the EV3 or use the EV3 as a vehicle to teach some other concept. And lo and behold, I'm actually a part of this. If you didn't know, I actually published a book on some of my EV3 projects back in 2018. You should check it out. Shameless plug is over now, back to the video. Anyway, I think the sheer amount of literature that's written about the EV3 is a clear indicator of just how popular, just how influential it was in the educational circles. Now this is kind of like hard to verify. I don't know the exact number of books published on the EV3 or the NXT, so it might not be a super fair comparison. The NXT also has plenty of books written about it, but I still think it's a great indicator that the EV3 was very often talked about in literature and indicates that it was part of the golden age of Mindstorms. Reason number seven is that during the EV3 generation, we saw LEGO Mindstorms represented on the global stage at the World Maker Fair, particularly in New York City. The World Maker Fair is a big deal for all kinds of makers and tech enthusiasts to come together every single year and share what they're working on projects and whatnot. And this was a huge event for getting the name of Mindstorms out there in the world. And it happened coinciding with the launch years of the EV3. And I'm very proud to have been able to represent LEGO Mindstorms at this fair for three years. By the way, this video kind of feels like I'm in a competition to see how many times I can flex in this one video. I promise I'll stop flexing for the rest of the video. But the point still stands that the World Maker Fair was a great way to get the EV3 brand out there in the minds of tech enthusiasts and what I think contributed to its status as the golden age of LEGO Mindstorms. Number eight is that the 20th anniversary of LEGO Mindstorms happened in 2018 during the EV3's lifespan. This was a really exciting event for a lot of us in the 
LEGO Mindstorms community, and there was a big celebration over there in Denmark. And as a matter of fact, one of my own robots, Grunt, was shipped over there for an exhibition during the 20th anniversary ceremony. Okay, I broke my promise and I flexed again. I'm sorry, guys. It was really cool to see the EV3 as the face of LEGO Mindstorms at this celebration of a monumental milestone for the Mindstorms brands. Number nine, and this is about the third party hardware that was invented for Mindstorms. Sure, it can be said that NXT started off the tradition of having really cool third party hardware, such as sensors and motors, from companies like Hitechnic, but I think that under the EV3 era, we saw the most interesting and most advanced third party hardware for a Mindstorms to date. I'm thinking about things from mind sensors like their gyroscope, uh, accelerometer slash IMU, their GPS sensor, uh, their vision sub system, their light sensor array, even their multiplexer, which allows you to connect a whole bunch of motors or sensors to your robot, which I demonstrated in this video where I made a six sensor line follower. And finally, last but not least, that brings me to reason number 10 of why I think the EV3 is the golden age of LEGO Mindstorms. I feel like that most people, especially here on the Builder Dude 35 channel, really miss the EV3 since its cancellation and moving on to Robot Inventor. And I think that's a really strong signal that the EV3 had some kind of magic that's hard to replicate it. If we miss it, that means it was really good. In contrast, I think that when the EV3 came out, moving away from the NXT, a lot of people embraced the EV3 with open arms because a lot of the EV3 was just straight improvements. At least that's my perspective. I could be wrong. I was kind of young when that happened. I think that the longing we have for the EV3 generation now that it's gone is indicative that the EV3 was something really special and that we're gonna miss it. And this all rolls into my definition of being the most fondly remembered by the most people. By the way, fourth generation of Mindstorms, the robot inventor is also really cool, and I think you guys should give it a chance and welcome it with open arms. If you're interested in learning more, you can check out my review or my playlist where I go over the new robot inventor in great detail. By the way, I wish I could have included sales numbers as one of my reasons to justify my pick, but it turns out Lego is actually a privately owned company. They don't have any shareholders, so they're not required to publish sales figures for each of their products. So you can't actually find how many NXTs or EV3s were sold over the years. Otherwise, I think that would be a really good indicator for arguing in favor of the NXT or the EV3 one way or another. Now it's time for you guys to hear the other side. Go to Unbrick Me's channel and check out his video where he explains his 10 reasons why he says the NXT was the golden age of LEGO Mindstorms. He has some pretty compelling points and I encourage you guys to go check out what he's made. And after you've seen both of our videos, come back here and let me know in the comments section below which of the four generations of Mindstorms do you guys think is the golden age of LEGO Mindstorms? I always love hearing your guys' thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this week, and I hope to see you in next week's video. Later.